all your soul and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. He says, all the law and the prophets hang on this. Um, and if this were, let's see if this falls off. If this were a Bible, the Old Testament would be that much. And so Jesus is saying, everything here boils down to love your neighbor and love your God. It's as simple as that. The other thing he says is, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And um, I don't think you can dispute that if you uh, examine different parts of your life. At the last part, it says, There were no needy persons among them, for from time to time those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put them at the apostles' feet, and was distributed to anyone as he has need. And we see televangelists. And the televangelists say, If you send us a $50 seed, you will reap uh, $600 back. Now, Katie always makes me change the channel when I want to watch something like that because I just watch it for, to laugh at it or to gain motivation to get back out here and, and have a counter to that word. That is not what this is saying. It's not saying sell everything you have and give it to the one, give it to the authority so that the authority can have all of the money. It's saying occasionally, from time to time, we sold things because we, as a group, we just needed them. We support each other. The entire group is what's significant in the story, not just one, um, which is an excellent way. If you're ever flipping through the channels, which I doubt you do like me, and stop and watch a person like that, if it's about the group, you can tell they're a decent person. If, if it's not about the group, um, it's definitely not. So if, if I were to put those two scriptures together, Take them to a sense of where we are today, trying to be a church, trying to um, endure the challenges of starting a new church and have those two. I think we got love. If a minister could pound a church over the head with love, if you can turn a phrase like that, um, I've certainly done that. If, if the percentage of sermons that I give that are about um, understanding that we all fall short and that we should all love each other, I'm sure it'd be, it would carry the majority, over 51%. So, how's our situation <laughs> like their situation in Acts? We're trying to start. We don't have a base yet. We're trying to grab a foothold, and we desperately need each other. How's our situation different? People aren't trying to kill us for doing it. People aren't trying to punish us. People aren't trying to burn the building down. That's what it was like then. So we've got some disadvantages, but we've got some real advantages compared to the people that we're trying to build um, in Acts. So um, just consider what are the ways, how, uh, and you know what? Take this Monday to Saturday. If you talk about treasure in your time, if I said Monday 9 a.m., what are you thinking about? Wednesday 6 p.m., Saturday, 10 a.m., Sunday, 10 a.m. What are you thinking about? Because there's times when Katie, for sure, and the girls treasure my time with them. There's occasions where um, I'm freaked out about something here, and I'm with them, but I'm an angry, anxious version of myself being with them. Have you, you ever with people that treasure your time, but you're an angry, anxious version of yourself while you're with them? To, to be certain. Think about the people that desperately need you, people that treasure you, people that you treasure. How do you treat them all throughout the week? How do you give to them? How do you make sure that everybody comes together, everybody's of one heart and mind, outside of a situation where it's absolutely desperate, just in our regular, normal, everyday lives? The people asked in that time, are you with us? And Jesus continues to ask us every day, are you with us? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.